there. Today we're looking at multiplying and dividing rational expressions. And so as we do this, we remember rational expressions are just like fractions. And the thing that you want to remember there is that how to multiply fractions. And so I'm going back here, just back to fifth grade when you first learned how to multiply fractions. Remember if you have something like two-thirds times, let's say, um, 12 tenths or something like that, that you multiply fractions straight across. But oftentimes before you multiply, you like to do some reducing. So in this case, 3 and 12 could reduce. As long as you have one thing on the bottom and one thing on the top, you can reduce. They can be catty corner or right above one another, whichever. Um, but I can also reduce my 2 and my 10. That'd be a 1 and a 5. And once you have everything reduced, then you just multiply straight across. 1 times 4 is 4. 1 times 5 is 5. And so that would reduce to 4 fifths. All right, same deal even if we throw some variables in there. We're going to look to do some reducing, and then we'll do multiply straight across. Now, it isn't that important if, if you maybe don't reduce first. You might come back at the end and reduce. So if you miss something, some part of reducing, oftentimes you'll catch it in the end. Okay, so when I look at this problem that we're doing right here, and again, you want to have notes in front of you and be filling those out as we go. Every once in a while, we'll pause so you can try one on your own. So when I look at this problem, I want to do any reducing that I can. Again, you can only reduce things that are being multiplied. And in this case, basically everything is getting multiplied. Um, this 6 times m, so this m right here and this m up here, I could reduce those if I wanted. This 8 and 6 could reduce. They're both even, so that'd be a 4 and a 3. And I think that's probably all I have for reducing. So then what I can do is multiply straight across. I have a 4 times a 4, so that's a 16. And on the bottom, I have a 3 times a 9, so that's a 27. And I still have my m to the 4th sitting there. And then you want to do one last check and make sure that you can't do any more reducing than that. And I think we're good with that. So that's our answer. So that's how you multiply fractions. Let's try where we are dividing fractions. Remember that the first thing you do when you divide fractions is change it to multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'm going to change this to 9 eighths times and then I flip that second fraction. Now let's look and see if there's any reducing that we can do before we keep going. And so I have a 9 on the top and a 9 on the bottom. I have an n to the first and an n to the second. So if you look at that as far as where do you have more n's, you don't, you'd have an extra n on the bottom. So this n to the second would actually turn into an n to the first. Sometimes I wait and do that at the end or I kind of just do it in my head. It's hard to show it on here. but um, what I end up with on the top is just a 7, and on the bottom I have an 8, and I have one of those ends still sitting there. There's my final answer. does not reduce any further than that. Now, these all were monomials. They're just like a single term, so it's kind of working with just ordinary fractions. Here's an example where we have a bunch of binomials in there. Now this is actually kind of a nice one to start with because what they've done is they've gotten everything already factored for us. That's really going to normally be our job to have to factor to get it to this point. But I wanted to show you one where it's all factored out and how things can reduce. So right here, this is being multiplied so it can be reduced by quantities. This is being multiplied right here, so is this. So it's kind of like what we were doing yesterday with the simplifying, only we have a lot more going on. So you're just looking for identical factors that can divide out. So an x minus 5 and an x minus 5, those will divide out. This 9 and this 9 could divide out. And then I think that's kind of all I have left. So on the top, I still have that 4 sitting there. And on the bottom, I have an x plus 7, and I have an x minus 6. And nothing else can reduce there, so I'm done. This one is pretty similar to that, only it has just a touch of factoring that we could try to do. So if you look at all the different parts of this, 
this first numerator here, this 7m minus 28, that could factor. So let's go ahead and factor that. So that'd be a 7 and then an m minus 4 just by pulling out your GCF over 7, multiplying 1 over an m minus 8. If it helps you put parentheses around that to help remind you that, hey, that's a whole quantity, it can only cross off as a whole quantity. All right, so by doing all that factoring or that little bit of factoring, didn't help me a bunch, but I do have these sevens now. They can cancel out. And then what I have left is an m minus 4 times 1, or just an m minus 4. And on the bottom, I've got an m minus 8. Nothing I can cancel, so I leave it right there. That's my answer. All right, this one has a little bit more for me. I do have a division, so I have to remember that I'm going to change that to multiplying by the reciprocal. Usually what I'll do is I go ahead and I'll, my very first step, I will factor everything, and if, I, if it's a division, I'll flip it at the same time. So let's kind of go through this one. So on the first fraction, I just have a 1 over, and then I can pull out a GCF. And then this division, I'm going to change to multiplication. And then I'm going to flip this fraction as I factor it. So this r plus 4, that doesn't really have any factoring, but it's going to shift down. And then this 35r minus 70, I can pull out a GCF. I'll put up a 35, and then I'll have an r minus 2 left. And now I look to see what can reduce for me. So the quick thing that jumps out at me is this r minus 2 and this r minus 2. Those will cancel out. The r plus 4 is kind of its own thing in parentheses there, its own quantity. And then the 20 and the 35, well, they're both divisible by 5, so I could reduce them both by 5. So that goes in there 4 times, and in there 7. And then after I've done all of that, it looks like on the top, all I have left is a 1 times a 7. And on the bottom, I have that 4, and then I have an R plus 4. Doesn't look like I missed out on anything reducing, so I'm going to call that good. Okay, so let's have you try one. It's another division problem, so what I want you to do is go ahead and factor anything that can factor, and then change this division to multiplying by the reciprocal. The one hint that I'm going to have for you is this 9 minus k is kind of weird. We normally have the k first, so what you're going to probably want to do on that is flip it around, but that's going to be weird because it's going to look like negative k plus 9. And we don't usually have our first term negative, so my recommendation on this would be to go ahead and write it like that, but then you're going to end up factoring out a negative 1 on it. So it would look something like this. Factor out a negative 1, and at the same time I'm going to switch the order. So when I pull out a negative 1, the k is going to be positive. I'm going to write it first, and the 9 is going to turn negative. Okay? Why don't you go ahead and pause the video, finish factoring everything and see if you can get anything to cross off. Don't forget to take this division and turn it into multiplying by the reciprocal. Pause. Alright, this is what you should have when you factored everything. And then the k minus tens will cancel. And by pulling that negative 1 out of there, I managed to make this look identical to this. So now the k minus 9's can cross off. And then all I have left is a k plus 10 on the top over a negative 1. Now you could leave it like that, but it's really not necessary to have that looking like a fraction. If you're going to divide by negative 1, let's go ahead and just divide everything by negative 1. And so that would look a lot simpler if you went ahead and just... Now remember that this has to go into both of those numbers. So my k is going to turn into a negative k, and my plus 10 will turn into a minus 10. And that would be a nicer way to write that so you don't have to leave it as a fraction. All right, we have two more for our notes. I'm going to do one with you that's kind of a messy one. This one has a lot going on. 
and then I'll give you a chance to try number eight, which is also kind of a messy one, and try to do it on your own. Okay, the big thing is you got to factor, factor, factor. All right, so looking at this, when I'm looking at what can I do in the numerator, looks like I'm going to pull out a GCF. And then I'll have 2P minus 1. Okay, in the denominator, probably going to be a 3P and a 2P. Definitely going to have to be a 1 and a 1. Um, my outer is going to be a 3P, inner is a 2P, and I'm trying to get a negative 1P, so I'll make my 3 be negative, my 2P be positive, and then that'll end up giving me the middle term that I want. Okay, so now let's go over to the second fraction, and let's work on it. Um, the denominator, that's an easy one. Let's pull out the GCF. And on the top, looks a little messier. Oh, you know what? If you look at the top, there's a GCF that could come out of that. That's going to help me try to find those factors. Plus, that means there's some additional reducing that I might be able to do. So let's start, and I'm just going to kind of show the work up here and pull the 2 out up here. So that'll be a 3p squared minus 11p minus 4. And then down here, when I'm rewriting it, I'll put the 2 there, and I'll factor that. All right, going to have to be a 3p and a p. And I could go 2 and 2, or I could go 4 and 1. My signs are going to be different here because that 4 is negative. So I think I'm going to go with a negative 4 and a positive 1, 4 and 1. Because what that gives me is negative 12p and a 1p, which is negative 11p. All right, so I've got everything factored. Now I'm looking to cross stuff off. Anything that matches. Here's a 2p minus 1. Here's a 2p minus 1. 3p plus 1, 3p plus 1. p minus 4, p minus 4. 2, 2. Lots and lots of stuff that cancels out. After all of that, all of this reduces. The only thing I have left is a 10. That's awesome when I can get a lot of stuff to cancel out. Makes me feel like it was worth my time. All right, let's try one more. This one, again, has a lot of factoring involved in it, plus you have the division. So what I want you to do is work on getting everything factored and flip your second fraction and then see if anything will match that you can factor out. Pause the video. All right, I hope you're not cheating. I hope you're really trying to do this all on your own. you got to practice that factoring. You should have gotten to this point here. Did you catch that a 3 could factor out right there, and then that would be easier? If you forgot that 3, what that means, and remember it flipped, so what I'm really looking at is my numerator now. And so if you didn't pull that 3 out there, there's a good chance of your two binomials here, one of them you could factor a 3 out. And so that's okay, you just need to get that 3 factored out of there. And if you don't, it's just not completely factored. And you might miss something that'll reduce. So depending on where that 3 is, you might not see that this m minus 2 and this m minus 2 cancel out. All right, I got a 7m minus 4, those cancel. Got a 3 and a 3. I think that's all I have. So this m plus 10 stays as a quantity, and m plus 6 stays as a quantity. And on the bottom, I have my 2m squared left. And that's it. Done. Okay, so we've done a bunch of these examples. That's about as hard as it's going to get right there. Go ahead and give your homework a shot. Good luck.